I'm Mark Despotakis. I'm the Director of Market Development at Progressive Music, uh, located just outside of Pittsburgh. And today I'm here with PMEA, the Pennsylvania Music Educators Association. PMEA is a statewide nonprofit organization of over 4,500 members. The organization includes those engaged in music instruction at all levels, from preschool through college and university retired educators, college students majoring in music education, as well as those in the music products industry. PMEA supports and serves music educators and music education students. We hope you've seen some of the music education students performing through the Capitol, not only today, but all through the entire month of March. March, March is designated as a month to celebrate many arts disciplines. One of those is music, and thus this month is known as Music in Our Schools Month. So uh, to begin today, it's my great pleasure to introduce Representative Eddie Day Pajinski, himself a former music educator, uh, with a special, special resolution for us for Music in Our Schools Month. Representative Pajinski. Thank you very much, Mark. It's really a pleasure to be with all of you here today, and of course, uh, very excited hearing all the incredible talent throughout uh, this great commonwealth. Uh, last year I had the, uh, indeed another pleasure of presenting the resolution, a citation honoring music in our schools month here in Pennsylvania and throughout the country. As a former music teacher uh, and choral director, I know the power of music. All of you that are involved here today in the arts understand the power of music. And let's just talk about it just for a few minutes. First of all, take a look at this magnificent work of art. This magnificent work of art. It is historic. It is a building. But it is a work of art. This magnificent example of what the human mind the creativity of the human person, what we can create with hand, mind, and body, is a perfect example of why the arts must always be presented throughout this country. And yet, those of us that are in the arts are always struggling to make sure there's enough money for our music program. Is that correct? If you haven't experienced that, you don't know what you're missing. Because <laughs> the school that I came from, great, wonderful class, uh, a blue class town, the ball, any kind of ball, a football, soccer ball, baseball, basketball, was always number one. Those of us in the arts always had to make sure that we found the extra dollars to make sure that we could have that choir, have that band. Well, I can tell you this. You know, great philosophers throughout the ages have indicated that music is the universal language because it doesn't matter where you come from. It doesn't matter what you know. It doesn't matter how old you are. When that music starts happening, a toe will tap. We'll get a feeling in our heart, feeling in our soul, don't we? because music is emotion. Music is history. Music is an incredible part of our lives that without it, without it, many have said life is not worth living. Now that might sound extreme, but we don't realize the power of music. The stress and strain that we're under, turning on a radio or now on the iPhone, getting the music you want to hear, to allow you to relax and enjoy life. So, as someone for 38 years who taught music and performed music, I know it doesn't look like it, but I was a rock guy. I had a rock band, Eddie Day and TNT. That's why the name is Eddie Day Pashinsky. That's crazy, huh? Pashinsky didn't work in the rock music, you know, so you have a different name. So I understand the power of music. I know what it does to people. I know how important it is. And that's why I'm very proud and honored to have presented this citation. Let me just read a few things for you. Whereas the study of music is basic 
to a complete education provides a competitive edge for successful educational reform, engages students in individual and group activities, develops creativity, touches problem solving, develops critical and evaluation skills. And whereas music education helps students acquire the, school, the skills of production and performance of music, as well as understanding of history and culture. Whereas music educators in this Commonwealth are committed to maintaining and improving school music programs for all students, regardless of their socioeconomic status and their abilities, for all students. And whereas every year, the National Association of Music Educators designates March as Music in Our Schools Month, the time of the year when music education becomes the focus of schools throughout our nation. It is fitting for our Commonwealth to recognize and commend music educators in this Commonwealth for their concerns and their effort to enhance the quality of music education in our schools and therefore First, let me say, I have Representative Kulik, who is here with me today, and there were several other legislators that wanted to be here. However, a whole bunch of meetings are taking place and other issues. So thank you, Representative Kulik, for being here. Therefore, be it resolved that this House of Representatives designate the month of March 2017 as Music in Our Schools Month. At this time, Mark and Abby and, and the uh, our president, all the new officers, if you'll come over here, I'd be more than happy to present this to you. Representative Kulik, why don't you join us? We'll turn around here so that they can get a picture. President. Once again, on behalf of the entire General Assembly, it's my honor to present to our Pennsylvania music educators, Music in the Month citation for 2017. Congratulations. Mark. Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you very much for your charge. Thank you so much, Representative Pashinsky, for your support uh, through the years. We really appreciate it. So today, music educators and students are visiting with legislators and their staff members to talk about the importance of music education programs and to address some specific policy issues. They're telling the important story of the value of music education, but also the way music education fits into the overall educational landscape. So right now, I'm going to briefly discuss some of these policy issues that will be presented today. First, we are very pleased to see go the governor has proposed an increase in the basic education subsidy in his 2017-18 budget proposal. However, it's important to note that the $100 million proposed increase would still not bring education funding to the level it was before the large cuts in 2011. Not only are schools still recovering from that budget cut, they're also dealing with other rising costs, including salaries, utilities, pension payments, among many other areas. Some estimates say that education funding in Pennsylvania would need to be increased by as much as $3 billion to nullify years of insufficient education funding. Pennsylvania ranks 46th in the nation when it comes to the state's share of pre-K to 12 12th grade education funding. So as a result, local school districts and communities are forced to make up the difference. And while we have a funding formula in place for state education dollars, the percentage of funds flowing through that formula is a small percentage of the state's total education spending. So all those factors combined continue to cause a great inequity in school funding. And a great inequity in funding creates great inequity for students across the Commonwealth. While most school districts have not completely cut their music and arts programs, some have cut opportunities for students in those programs. That's simply not fair. Why should any student not be afforded the same educational opportunities as other students who live just miles away from them? Poorer communities cannot raise as much revenue as, as can richer communities, and because of that, some students get shortchanged. Study after study has proven the benefits of music and arts education. I won't recap all of those here because we've heard all the studies and we've seen the data. 
but I do think it's important for us to remember the value of music and the arts for their own cultural value. Music teachers aren't teaching their students because they expect all of them to perform at Carnegie Hall one day. They're teaching them a skill and an appreciation they can take with them for the rest of their lives. Music is a part of every culture, and it's our duty as a society to teach about culture and teach students to be actively engaged in their world and the cultures of the world they live in. Simply put, if there's not enough funding for schools, students lose opportunities in areas like music and the arts, and that is simply unacceptable. Now, we've reached a landmark period in education. In 2015, the United States Congress passed and President Obama signed the Every Student Succeed Act, known as ESSA. The law updated the Elementary and Secondary Education Act, which is a law governing our nation's schools. One of the major components of ESSA is the definition of well-rounded subjects, as one of the, and one of those subjects is music. Yes, for the first time in history, music is listed in federal law as a subject area all students should have access to for a well-rounded education. Through this law, Congress is telling states that it's important to teach students in a wide variety of subject areas and not just a narrow focus on a few tested areas. Truly a sea change in education policy. But what does that mean in Pennsylvania? Currently, the Pennsylvania Department of Education is working on an ESSA state plan. In fact, at this moment, they're testifying before the state and house education committees on that plan. The plan will be drafted, revised, and submitted by fall of this year. We want to remind the Department of Education, members of the General Assembly, as well as Governor Wolf of the well-rounded language in the law, specifically as it relates to access and participation to music education programs. And finally, the Pennsylvania Department of Education has been without a full-time arts education advisor after the position was removed from the 2011-12 state budget. This position is vital to educators to help them navigate the ever-changing teaching landscape, including the world of teacher evaluations. While their subject areas have maintained advisor positions, the arts have not. Restoring this position is crucial to assist music and arts educators teach our future, the children of this commonwealth. Policymakers will be presented with all of these legislative priorities today, and we hope they will keep them in mind as we come to the close of this fiscal and school year and begin planning for the new year. PMEA works with students, educators, and school administrators to ensure a quality education that includes music for all children. And in Pennsylvania, we know much of the heavy lifting of crafting curriculum, schedules, and budgets happens at the school district level and school superintendents are at the front line of that work. So today it's my great pleasure to welcome one of those superintendents with us, to be here with us. Dr. John Molnar is the superintendent of the South Moreland School District and is this year's PMEA Outstanding Superintendent. Dr. Molnar. Thank you and good morning. I'm pleased to be able to discuss the importance of arts and music education in our schools. Today I want to focus on three areas. The importance of uh, music, the importance of student engagement, and the need for funding for the arts that does not stratify student opportunities based on geography or socioeconomics. There's a great deal of research to support the fact that music helps to develop and enhance skills that facilitate learning and other academic endeavors. The movement, listening, and sound production involved in early childhood music education all help to develop both gross and fine motor skills, hand-eye coordination, and listening skills. Musical training develops the left side of the brain and therefore helps to improve and accelerate language development, language competence, and all of that helps to children to develop socially. And social competence, as you know, is becoming more and more important as technology overtakes face-to-face -face communication, especially among our young people. Research also tells us that music training can have a positive effect on IQ. Studies have found neurological changes in the brains of children who participate in music training in terms of sound discrimination, fine motor abilities, and in neural pathways. A study published in 2007 found that students in schools with superior music programs scored 20% higher on standardized tests than schools with low quality music programs, regardless of socioeconomic differences. Musical training increases attention span and verbal memory. It also boosts self-esteem, 
not through the receipt of a participation award, but through a feeling of real accomplishment, the mastery of a complex task. Just as important but often overlooked is the fact that music education fosters creativity and teamwork in students. Employers today are looking for employees that can work as a team toward a common goal, communicate effectively and are motivated and self-disciplined, and who can think critically. Graduates of music programs possess these skills to a high degree, regardless of their chosen profession. Music is an integral part of the warp and woof of our humanity. Music and the arts provide opportunities for student engagement, participation and belonging, and promote citizenship, pride and self-discipline. Extra and co-curricular activities comprise a very small percentage of a school's overall budget. However, they do provide a big bang for the buck. These activities are where students learn lifelong lessons that complement the academic learning of the core curriculum. Extra and co-curricular activities are not a diversion, but rather are an extension of an effective educational program. Students who participate in music, art, theater, dance, and athletic activities have higher grade point averages, better attendance records, fewer discipline referrals, and higher graduation rates than those who do not. Participation in extra and co-curricular activities are predictors of higher math achievement scores, college and career success, and volunteering and voting later in life, along with non-academic measures, such as a sense of well-being, a feeling of belonging, and a sense of purpose. Research shows that extra and co-curricular activities are positively associated with adolescents' friendships as they provide voluntary opportunities and safe spaces for teens to develop healthy relationships. I came to believe that more and more as I rode on a bus from Westmoreland County with about 25 of our finest students today. Engagement in school activities helps students to develop initiative and to learn social skills while developing emotional and social capital. All of these soft skills are important to prospective employers. Students who develop habits of engagement while in school tend to continue these patterns of involvement into adulthood, while those who do not participate as students are more likely to remain detached as adults. As you can see from everything I've said so far, music and the arts provide numerous benefits to our students. In his book, Catching Up or Leading the Way, American Education in the Age of Globalization, Yong Zhao suggests that the recent emphasis on high-stakes te high testing has damaged education in America by stifling creativity. He posits that Asian countries have benefited from American creativity and are working to find ways for their students to become more creative. While Americans work to close the achievement gap, Asian nations are working to close the creativity gap. As a country, we must look to the genius of and rather than the tyranny of or and promote both achievement in core subject areas and creativity through the arts. These two can coexist and can actually have a synergistic relationship. However, both of these cost money. As decision makers and policy makers, it's very important for our leaders in Harrisburg to understand the importance of maintaining a strong music and arts presence in Pennsylvania's schools, and that means all of Pennsylvania's schools. A gap does exist. Student from, students from affluent communities have far greater opportunities for music and arts education. Musical instruments are expensive. Quality arts educators cost money. Music costs money. Producing theatrical productions costs money. Band uniforms cost money, and the list goes on. Local school boards are faced with the daunting task of balancing ever-increasing financial demands, such as the Pisa pension crisis and the uncertain and increasing costs of health care with the constraints of Act I and an aging population that in many cases can ill afford increased real estate tax burdens. With limited ability to raise revenues, local school boards are left with the unsavory task of reducing staff and curtailing programs. So today, I encourage our legislators and our governor to consider the importance of a robust music program in the schools of our Commonwealth and to ensure that sufficient funding exists to support these vital programs. Frederick Nietzsche once said, without music, life would be a mistake. Let's be sure we don't make a mistake. Let's keep music alive and vibrant in the schools of the Commonwealth. Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Molnar. It's, it's so important um, to have those school administrators uh, being supportive because it's, it's that on-the-ground work that really makes music programs happen. So 
music programs and music education is really all about the students. Um, and so all throughout the Capitol this month, and especially today, you've heard student groups performing. So I'd like to bring up two students that were formed this afternoon to talk about how music education has impacted their lives. Please welcome Amanda Kahn and Benjamin Whiteman, students at Plymouth White Marsh High School in the Colonial School District. The importance of music is difficult to explain, partly because music predates any spoken language resembling those we know now, and is far older than reading or writing. History from thousands of years ago has been preserved in music. The rhythms of Greek epic poetry lent themselves to memory more easily than words alone. Every human culture known to us today has invariably had music. The ubiquity of music throughout the world and time only makes the question of why it is so important and compelling more interesting. To me, music is a language, not a separate art form. Music is more powerful than any spoken language. Even without understanding a single word, a person can recognize the tone of a musical piece. And music can communicate to animals. Dogs and cats are far more receptive to their owner's tone and tempo than words. Birds confer messages with varied strings of melodious tunes while insects serenade each other with rhythmic clicks. A complicated message cannot be easily delivered through pitches and rhythms, but perhaps music's simplicity is part of why it is so compelling. It is not plagued with the nuances of grammar or syntax, but plainly expresses its emotional message with an ease and convenience that words lack. This base level of emotion that all creatures feel is why music is able to communicate to all of them. As a student who wants to take half a dozen AP classes, keep up with a foreign language, and maybe even take an elective, fitting orchestra into my schedule has required numerous trips to the guidance office and requests to the vice principals. But I have no doubt that these small sacrifices are worth being an orchestra. No other class allows so much freedom. There is never a day when I am not contributing my voice through my violin. And I learn every day, not just how to better play my instrument, but also how to operate as part of a group. Playing in an ensemble and performing solo are two completely different experiences. In orchestra, I learn how to listen to the other parts of a piece, how to follow a conductor, and how to best support my own section. While this may sound more strenuous than playing solo, I always know that everyone else in the orchestra is doing the same thing and has my back. From a young age, I've always felt music communicating to me. It was there when I first began learning piano, and again when I started playing violin. It was there when I became not just a person playing violin with other violinists and musicians, but a part of an orchestra, a part of a whole. It was there when I was stressed or angry or sad. It was especially there when I was happy. And it's because of music that I've made lifelong friends, like Ben, who's been my orchestra stand partner since fifth grade. It's because of music that I get to take orchestra as a class, and instead of taking notes or listening to a lecture, I'm fully engaged in what is one of my favorite things to do. Being in an orchestra has taught me so many crucial life lessons. I've learned self-discipline and performance under pressure, as well as organizational and teamwork skills. Most importantly, however, I've learned what it is like to have a family not related to you by blood. I feel it in the clamor before orchestra starts. I feel it in the warm and vibrant pitches as we tune to sound like one and I feel it every time the curtain rises and the rush of adrenaline that follows shortly after. In this family, we are all different people. Some of us are athletes, others are artists, some are quiet, some are outgoing, some are tall and some are short. We are all musicians, and that's what ties us together. In many ways, music has been like a friend to us since childhood. As we grew up, it also grew with us, changing to fit what we needed in the moment. It was both a listener and a teacher, and no matter what mood we were in, it always managed to calm us down and center us. We're lucky to have orchestra as a class and to have music be such an immense part of our lives. Right now, we're at an important junction about to graduate high school and head off to college. It's scary and exciting at the same time, but we know music will continue to be a lifelong friend, just like the ones we've made because of it. Thank you.
I, I think that says it all. I don't think we even need to say anything else. Thank you. Thank you both so much, and best of luck to you uh, as you graduate and go into your next endeavor. And you can see them perform uh, with their colleague students uh, this afternoon at 1.15 uh, in the East Wing. So as I mentioned earlier, a new federal piece of legislation is changing the educational landscape nationwide. The Every Student Succeeds Act opens a variety of new possibilities for states and school districts to decide how education happens in their communities. With us today from the National Association for Music Education to discuss this new federal legislation is Tushar Swain, the Legislative Policy Advisor. Tushar. Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for having me. Thank you, PMEA. Thank you, Mark Despotakis, for inviting me. It's really, a, truly a pleasure to be here. I'm very humbled and honored to be here today. Um, there are two things that I've learned since uh, working at the advocacy shop uh, at the National Association for Music Education. The first is, is that music educators are always advocating. Advocating for, I've seen them advocate on the national level on Capitol Hill, and of course I've seen them not advocate on State Hill Days like they are today, but they are always advocating to their local administrators, their principals, their colleagues, their school boards. They're advocating for funding. They're advocating for resources. They're advocating for time. They're advocating for their students. This advocacy goes on day in and day out this advocacy was taken to the federal level in 2015, and in 2015 we saw the results. After 12,000 letters being sent to Congress, to the United States Congress, as well as numerous, uh, numerous meetings with lawmakers, thousands of meetings with lawmakers, the federal law from No Child Left Behind changed, and the Every Student Succeed Act was passed. And with that, for the first time in the history of our country, music education was enumerated into federal law as a well-rounded subject for the first time ever. And it was that passion and commitment of music educators, of music students, that allowed that to happen. Now, perhaps more importantly, that advocacy has to move down and has moved down quite effectively to the state and local levels. Right now, um, right now, many states, actually all states, have been working to implement their state plans, which will include, or which we hope will include, a well-rounded concept. And right now, today, PMEA, as long as well as PA Music Advocates, uh, have been at the forefront of ensuring that a well-rounded component is, um, is within the state plans as local education agencies, um, they submit their plans for Title I and Title IV funding. It's important that you guys are out there advocating for uh, music education to be a, an important part in your music um, excuse me, in your state implementation plans, as well as access and participation rates in your state plans as well, which is going to be so crucial and so important for the future of music education here in Pennsylvania and ultimately across the country. So again, just um, it was the commitment and dedication of music education advocates that got you guys a seat at the table, and now it's time to preserve that seat at the table at the state and local levels. Thank you so much for having me, and uh, have a great day here today. Thank you. Thank you, Tushar. Uh, and so we thank you all for attending today and hope that you'll take the message you heard today to policymakers at the federal, state, and most importantly, local level. We must keep music and arts as part of a well-rounded education for all students. So to finish up this morning, I'd like to introduce Henry Perlberg, PMEA's president. Good morning, or I should say good early afternoon. <clears throat> 
On behalf of Pennsylvania Music Educators Association, PMEA, I would like to thank everyone for taking the time to be here today for this very important opportunity to share and express our beliefs that every pre-kindergarten through 12th grade student in Pennsylvania deserves to have access to a quality music education that is sequential and standards-based and is taught by a qualified and certified music educator. As Mark said, my name is Henry Pearlberg. I am a music educator in the Wallingford Swarthmore School District in Delaware County, and I am president of PMEA. Our mission in PMEA is to advance comprehensive and innovative music education for all teachers and students through quality teaching, rigorous learning, and meaningful music engagement. The month of March has been designated across the country as Music in Our Schools Month. It is a time to celebrate, showcase, and bring to the forefront of our local, state, and national communities and decision makers the positive impact that music education has on our children. During the month of March, right here in our Pennsylvania Capitol building, we've been showcasing each and every day the incredible music-making talents of our PMEA member students. This year, 48 music ensembles from 38 schools representing all parts of our Commonwealth are performing through the month. I am extremely grateful to the PMEA members their students, as well as their school administrators for demonstrating right here in Harrisburg just some of the great music programs that are taking place in our Pennsylvania schools. Research studies over the past 30 years have shown over and over again that the study of music and arts contributes to the development of essential cognitive systems, which includes reasoning, creativity, decision making and problem solving. Music enhances development and maintenance of our brain's memory system. Music is a language that can enhance the abilities of children who don't excel in the expression of verbal thinking. And music in the arts education encourages alternative thinking, multiple answers, and creative insights. Music more than any other subject can reinforce human empathy and sensitive towards others. Music is inclusive with the power and the potential to bring people together. To quote a world-renowned musical artist, entrepreneur and educator, Yo-Yo Ma, music enhances the education of our children by helping them to make connections and broadening the depth with which they think and feel. If we are to hope for a society of culturally literate people, music must be a vital part of our children's education. For sure, Pennsylvania's reputation throughout the country is one that values quality education access to all of our students in all subjects. Perhaps the single most important responsibility of our Commonwealth is to provide quality educational opportunities for each and every child. PMEA's fundamental beliefs that are, are that music and arts develop student skills that are critical to a 21st century success in school and in life, and that by developing these skills, we are shaping our students' identities, values, of life and is essential not only to the economy of PMA, PA, but the United States, but also helping in shaping them as contributing adult citizens of our next generation. Two years ago, PMEA published over 1,400 stories of how music education impacted the lives of Pennsylvanians, students, teachers, family members, and communities. The story that I would like to share is one that impacted me the same year, one month later. A former middle school student of mine named Nick Chung then graduating an engineering student from Stanford University and invited me to attend an honors luncheon out in California. Each of those top graduates of his class were permitted to invite one teacher they had prior to going to college that they felt had been a major influence on them. Several of these 34 students had invited their music teacher. Nick wrote in his statement that his experiences in music ensembles that he participated in cultivated a love of music and learning when math left him discouraged. To quote Nick, he said, I am convinced that music is the single most important factor in enabling me to succeed academically, professionally, and personally. Fifteen months ago, the Every Student Succeeds Act was made into law in Washington, D.C., and the Pennsylvania Department of Education has been hard at work along with many of its stakeholders to devise a comprehensive state plan. PMA requests that the PDE consider the language that includes music and arts as part of a well-rounded education, measuring all areas of required accountability and including all subjects that represent a well-rounded education. And also language on how to best use Title IV Part A funds that will include music and arts as part of a well-rounded education. To close today, I would like to thank everyone that had made this day possible. Mr. Mark, Mr. Mark Dispatakis, our PME Advocacy Council Chairperson, 
our PMA office under the direction of PMA Executive Director Abigail Young, from our PA House of Representatives from the 121st District, our outstanding friend and supporter of music education, the Honorable Eddie Day Pashinsky. Mr. Pashinsky, thank you for your resolution as well as your colleagues for the unanimous passage designating the month of March as Music in Our Schools Month. Congratulations to our PMEA Superintendent of the Year awardee from the Southmoreland School District, Dr. John Malmore, and to his music faculty and students for the time and foresight in his nomination. Dr. Malmore, thank you for all of your support of your district's music programs. I'd also like to thank our NAFME representative, Mr. Tushar Swain, and most perhaps, most importantly, our student musicians, Amanda Kahn and Benjamin Whiteman from the Plymouth White Marsh High School. This concludes our news conference today. Once again, I'd like to thank you all for attending today. Follow our news conference, we will have more concerts going on today. And right after this one, we would like to introduce a performance by the Episcopal Academy's fifth grade band, orchestra, and chorus under the direction of PMAU member, Deborah Newnham. Thank you everyone again for coming out today.